Okay. If you guys look at tangents, again, what are we trying to find? When we're using the tangent inverse, what are we looking for? Are we looking for a side length, a value, an angle? An angle. We're looking for an angle, right? We're looking for the angle where our tangent is going to equal square root of 3. Now, we have an issue here. Because if you guys, sine and cosine are easy. They really are. Because all you need to do is find out for sine, you just need to figure out which y coordinate is 1 half, right? And then reflect that based on the positive or negative. For cosine, you just do the x coordinate. And you do the same thing. Tangent's not as fun. Because tangent is the reflection. So let's do this. Tangent of pi over 6. That is 1 half over square root of 3 over 2. Tangent of 45 degrees is square root of 2 over 2 divided by square root of 2 over 2. And then we have the tangent of 60 degrees, which is square root of 3 over 2 divided by 1 half. All I did was take the y coordinate over the x coordinates. Why did I switch these? Just using radians. Does everybody see? All I did was took y over x. Tangent of theta is equal to y over x. Correct? Is everybody OK with that? OK, are you good? OK. So the only one that simplifies the square root of 3, yes. And what do you do? What did I always tell you guys? Like multiply by the reciprocal, right? Well, when you do that, tangent of pi over 3 is the only one that gives you that angle, or gives you square root of 3, right? So if we look at the unit circle, pi over 3 is the same thing as 60 degrees. And then what is the constraint of tangent? Tangent, the angle has to lie between? Does that work? So theta is pi over 3. That's the answer. So the inverse tangent of square root of 3 is, equi is the angle pi over 3, or 60 degrees. And what I'm trying to say is, if I'm asking for radians, which I'm going to be doing, because that's what we, you guys need to make that mental shift of radians.